I guess everybody knows by now that there's a movement for uh, the liberation of women afoot in the world. And if there hadn't been already, my next guest's book, uh, The Female Eunuch, which I believe is out of paperback now, would have started one. She's an, uh, an educator, a journalist, um, and she's on her way to cover the conventions, which would be interesting for, I believe, um, Harper's Magazine. Here she is, a, a terrific lady, a former female eunuch, Jermaine Greer. <laughs> You. I haven't seen you in a, in a long time, and uh, you look terrific. Do I really? Yeah, yeah. I'll but say then, it again. I yeah. really look terrific. Yeah, I always think so, though. Say, so you've created quite a splash over here with uh, your underwear article. Uh, perhaps we can get... A splash? Get qu quite a uh, furor. <laughs> uh, maybe we can get that out of the way. But uh, everybody's talking about it. I watched this show the other night. Isn't In fact, strange? Tony Randall was hosting for me. I forgot to thank him, by the way. And, um, and uh, it was quite a thing. Uh, you wrote a piece for... Uh, Ms. Well, actually, yeah. it was written originally for the Sunday Times. In London? In London, yeah. And it was so strange because 50 people wrote instantly saying, why are you wasting your time writing about underwear? Anyway, people wear pants because, because, screeds and screeds and screeds of paper. Right. And I sort of write back small notes saying, why are you wasting your time? You know? <laughs> it was really very the strange. Forest. They wrote poetry, you know. They wrote poetry that went like, um, Germaine Greer, you talk such rot. Who on earth wants to see your bot? Your bot. <laughs> millions and millions of lines of poetry. The English were moved to poetry by my writing an article about panties. I have written 30 articles, and I've never had poetry for anything but the one on panties. That's wonderful. I don't know what that says about the English, but uh, I also plenty. got a desperate letter from a tailor who said, if you'd ever had to alter trousers worn by someone who didn't wear underpants, you would realize that you were doing the tailors of the world a disservice. So you really have rocked the island. Well, well, yes, you just have to mention knickers and they all go berserk. That's such a funny word for them. Knickers is what the English, <laughs> what we would call, what would we call them? Well, people in, in uh, America think you mean knickerbockers, those long Pants things. with socks. We call them plus, plus fours, plus what, fours. What they call in ladies' girdle ads and on lingerie ads and bloomers. things. Bloomers. Panties or bloomers, would that be the same as knickers? <laughs> Is that See, the same thing? He's fascinated too, isn't it terrible? <laughs> no, I mean, you wrote an article suggesting that ladies... Uh, uh, shed their underwear. Yeah, well, the whole thing is, you see, that when you go to school, you have to wear knickers, panties, scanties, bloomers, Whatever. for modesty's sake. Briefs. And the whole point is that that's got nothing to do with it, because you're not supposed to see them, so how can they protect your modesty? And in fact, then you mm. find out that people are kind of strange about them. I once came home from work and went out to collect all my panties that were on the line. They were all different colors, these marvelous little panties. Uh -huh. And I sort of went, and I realized that there was not a crutch left in one of them. Someone had come along with shears and clipped off. <laughs> and I sort of There's stood the there and I thought, oh, oh. oh, and I thought he's watching. He's somewhere there. He's watching my yeah. reaction. So I kind of acted like I went out there every day and found them. <laughs> <laughs> and I went inside and locked all the doors, all the windows, and just sat and shook on the bed. I mean, how would you feel if you went in your... <laughs> the lady next door had been at your yeah. underpants with the shears. How would you feel if I was the guy that went there and did, actually did that? Well, I'd want to know. I, I, I'd want to congratulate you for going into analysis. Well, you were in England outrageous. at that time, weren't you? I was, well, but this was in Australia. No, that was Australia. Oh, Australia. <laughs> oh. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that he was not guilty. Uh, that is, the English are strange in their... Would you say the English have more oddities and perversions and quirks and um, people who are turned on by feather dusters and just all sorts of <laughs> weird things? More, more Rubber than, ground sheets and all that. More than America? I must say... It seems like yeah, the English well, are... it seem, well, I think you may be right. I think there may yeah. be just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because I don't read enough American newspapers to know whether you have those pages full of obscure advertisements for uh, rubber clothing of all kinds. Yes, You can right. get rubber evening dresses in England, you know. Yes, now what is the thing there exactly? What, what's supposed well, to be so good about it? Well, isn't it something to do with having had a rubber sheet in your cot when you were small? As a baby? And, and so you have a connection of some kind of... Uh, urinogenital pleasure arising from the smell of your uh, rubber sheet. Something oh, like that. I mean, really. I don't know. I don't really know. I'm not into it myself. It's not my thing. I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps viewers can enlighten us. Um, <laughs> You're probably going to get a whole lot of poems now. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of crummy poems. <laughs>